Look at Mr. Peanut. What isn't fascinating? I mean, besides being a peanut. He's got spats, he's got a cane, he's got a top hat. He is out to go out. He's the man when it comes to peanuts. It's a good point. The planter's mascot is pretty dapper. In fact, for one group of people, Mr. Peanut is so dashing, so debonair, they've spent decades celebrating him and collecting his memorabilia. They call themselves the Peanut Pals, and they've been around since 1978. Recently, club members got together for their 37th annual national convention in Philadelphia to showcase, sell, and swap some of their prized collectibles. We just say we're a bunch of nuts and that, uh, you know, we enjoy collecting Mr. Peanut, and most people, they just think it's a lot of fun. They, they call us a bunch of nuts, too, and we share the nuts with them. Planters Peanuts advertising campaigns have produced a colossal amount of memorabilia since the monocled mascot was born in 1916. At one point they had bracelets, they had little Mr. Peanut fobs, beach balls, coloring books, swizzle sticks, salt and pepper shakers and glasses, milk trucks. They even had baby rattles and they came in two different colors, blue and pink. And with the famous legume turning 100 this year, a lot of that is really old. So it's like antiquing. You stumble upon one item here, another one there, and next thing you know, you're hooked. Scott Schmitz's parents got their first piece in 1976 at a community center in Wisconsin. And when he grew up, Scott took over their collection. What started out, for the most part, in 1976 as two shelves in a china cabinet in my mom's living room grew up, grew up to now a full collection in my wife's and my basement. <laughs> it's huge. I at least have to have five to 6,000 pieces at least have to have five, 6,000 pieces. The convention is an opportunity to grow those collections even more, and club members don't waste any time. Buying, selling, and swapping items begins right after registration with room hopping, where anyone staying at the hotel can set up shop in their room. It's exciting because it's the first time you get to see what people are bringing. You don't know what people brought, and you don't want to miss out. Sold. Ooh, my first sale. Cash. Thank you. A hat may go for a dollar, but big ticket items, like a Mr. Peanut that taps his cane or a trolley sign, can go for thousands. Yellow. Sadly for the Peanut Pals, club membership has dropped sharply over the years, from as many as 1,000 members 15 years ago to about 300 today. Chalk it up to the kids these days. With the iPhones and the Instagram, they just don't seem to be that interested in accumulating old stuff. The newer generation just they're not collectors. It's, it's hard. Even our own son, um, he has absolutely no interest in our collection. <laughs> so we hope the club doesn't die out with us older folks. Schmidt says he's working hard to attract new members. He's focusing on people in their 40s and 50s who remember Mr. Peanut and can appreciate the character's history. In the meantime, Schmidt is soaking up what he's come to love most about convention weekends, the camaraderie. I'm here to go out to lunch. I'm here to hang out and have a beer with my friends. I'm here to chit-chat and see what happened in the last year. That's what it's all about now.